Welcome in to a Denver Broncos mailbag show. This was taped during our live show on Monday, just a couple minutes after the Nathaniel Hackett news broke. So if things have changed by the time you're watching this, just bear with us. But we're going to answer the questions you guys asked during our live show about where the Broncos go from here after firing Hackett in the middle of the season. Well, before the season ended, after giving up a 50-burger on Christmas Day and a fight breaks out on your sideline between your NFL Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee, Dalton Reisner, and your backup quarterback, Brett Rippin. So we got some questions we're going to run through from you all coming in from maybe Jalen, oh no, different last name, Gabriel Vigil. Do you think the coach and Russell's bad vibes made Russell suck? No, I, I think Hackett's a really good guy, right? I think no one's going to really question that, like his character and whatnot. And Hackett was very much of the belief of empowering Russell Wilson. Maybe that was to a fault, right? He was all in on Russ, and when Russ was bad, he was a little afraid to go away from his quarterback. So I don't think those two are correlated, and that's why Russell Wilson sucks, or sucked this year at least. Next question coming in via Super Chat from Bonkius Maximus. Hackett is a good guy. It's that he, it's, it's that he just it isn't a fit for a head coach job. The only reason why we hired him was to try and lure in Aaron Rodgers. Yep, like I said, I think Hack is a good guy. Would love to get a beer with him. Just not cut out to be an NFL head coach. Now, the part about Aaron Rodgers is very interesting because, I mean, everyone was adamant that that's not why they hired him. And maybe that's true, but that's definitely going to make for a great ESPN 30 for 30 in maybe a couple of years of was the Broncos head coaching hire just completely fueled on Aaron Rodgers coming over? Because if so, boy, oh boy, oh boy, is that an all-time blunder right there. Next question coming in from Junior. Should the Broncos bring Bill Belichick if the Patriots fire him? I'm looking at our Patriots guy right now. He's shaking his head. Yeah? I mean, who's going to say no to... I think there are a lot of teams that would fire their head coach to get Bill Belichick on their team. Now, I don't see the Patriots firing him. Uh, he's not having a great year this season. I mean, a, a complete meltdown against the Raiders the other week. But if Bill Belichick wants to coach for an NFL held te uh, NFL, NFL uh, team, hell yes. Like, sign me up to get Belichick to the Broncos. That is a major, major, major long shot, though. I do not see that happening. Now, here's the big question that I think a lot of people are asking right now. Who is more to blame this year, right? Who are you pointing the finger at? Is it Hackett? Or is it Russell Wilson? Because Hackett got fired after losing 51-14 to against the Rams. But in Hackett's defense, he didn't throw four interceptions. Like, you have to be able to separate execution and coaching. And Hackett's not the one who threw that god-awful pick six or the two first-quarter interceptions by Russell Wilson. Now, Hackett is the head coach of the team that had a fight breakout on his, on his sideline during the game between his starting left guard and his backup quarterback. So... That's the kind of stuff you can put on Hackett. Overall, I think Hackett is more guilty this season. Russ has been bad, and it's pretty insane that for how bad he was, someone else was able to be worse. But I ultimately do say Hackett was more to blame this season. Let's go Broncos next up on the show. The Broncos should hire the Seahawks offensive coordinator, that's Shane Waldron, from Russell Wilson's statistical best three seasons. So Shane Waldron is, I think, the guy you're getting after here. And it's definitely an interesting path because Broncos ownership is looking at this going, we are stuck to with, with Russ, right? 2023, he's here. 2024, he's here. Now, after that, you could move on from Russell Wilson, and it's still a dead cap hit of about $49 million, which would be an NFL record. But... Ultimately, if they decide because we're stuck with him, this hire has to be geared around Russ, which might be a bad idea, don't you think, to make a hire solely based on how the worst player on your team arguably played this year to empower him? That might backfire on you. I think you should make the best hire for the team and not just for one individual. That's my two cents on the matter. So Shane Waldron, definitely a name to keep an eye on for. Let's get to JKM's question next here. Terrell Davis for head coach. Peyton Manning, too, is his OC. Uh, no, no, right? You, you don't go the Colts path, right? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to Jeff Saturday. 
but uh, Saturday is no longer for the boys. Saturday is for Colts losing. Like, you can't do that type of path of Terrell Davis, Peyton Manning. Now, I would do Peyton Manning. Terrell Davis, no. But Peyton Manning, he's probably the smartest mind in football right now. But I, I appreciate the idea of going down that Colts path, which it did get them one win, but that's probably all it's going to be. We're going to get to more questions you guys have in just a second. But it is all the Broncos all the time here at the Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. So subscribe to the channel today if you're looking for the latest Broncos news and rumors like, say, when the head coach gets fired, who are the top replacements, right? Who are the names you should keep an eye on for? Hit that big red button and subscribe to the channel today. We got a question coming in from Baxter. Dark Horse candidate, Greg Roman, that's the Ravens OC. He would at least make our offense entertaining. I mean, Greg Roman's been getting some fire buzz from the Ravens as of late, which it's, I mean, it's very common, of course, to hire another team's coordinator. Not sure how common it is to hire a coordinator who's currently on the hot seat at his own team right now. The thing with Greg Roman is the Ravens have been electric under Lamar Jackson, but they've sort of become a bit, I'm not going to say one-dimensional, but as the years have progressed from Lamar Jackson's MVP season, defenses have begun to figure them out more and more. They're still hard to beat, don't get me wrong, but I'm not sure if Greg Roman is the best guy for the job. Also, he has no previous head coaching experience, and I think the best decision for this team is to get a guy who has previous head coaching experience. Unlike the previous three hires, which have ultimately all ended in quick and short dismissals. We got another question coming in from Ragnar. Add Eric Bieniemy to the list, bro. I've got a list of my top 10 candidates. We'll throw it on there. I don't have Eric Bieniemy on my list for two reasons. One, he has interviewed with about or over half of the NFL already, and no one's given him any real consideration. That should be a red flag to you. When over 50% of NFL teams talk to him, and after one interview decide you're not a part of our final list, for the most part, that's not a good sign. Two, there's a decent amount of skeletons in his closet. Now he knows the area, right, was at Boulder for quite some time. But ultimately, I am passing on Eric Bieniemy. I do have an early replacements list right here. Top 10 names. It's kind of a mixture of who I would like to see the Broncos hire versus what I am hearing across the league as some buzz candidates, some popular names in the coaching circles right now to keep an eye on for. So that's my list. Frank Reich is my number one. Sean Payton is my dream number one. I don't know if he'll end up really considering the Broncos, especially if he wants Vic Fangio as his DC, because that could be a problem. But who is your top Hackett replacement? I got a list of 10 names right there. Let me know who your number one Hackett replacement is in the comment section below. Let's get to this question coming in from DCX Viper. Do you trade Corlin Sutton and Jerry Judy in a package next offseason for high draft picks? I think Jerry Judy is someone you may want to hold on to right now just because he has played well really since all the trade deadline buzz. And I'm interested in holding on to Judy, picking up his fifth-year option. Corlin Sutton, on the table for sure. Really, even Judy is on the table, don't get me wrong. I think every single player on this roster, except for Patrick Sertan, even Justin Simmons, as hard as that pill that may be to swallow, is you pick up the phone for. Sertan's the only guy I'm sending them straight to voicemail. But Sutton and Judy, if someone calls the Broncos offering a second-round pick for Cortland Sutton, tell me you wouldn't think long and hard about it, especially with sort of the injuries and his, his tendency to vanish for stretches of a season, year in and year out, ever since his breakout year, I would definitely listen to all offers except for Patrick Sertan. Dolph World, Walton Penner should buy out Russ's contract this offseason. Uh, that's a big one, right? I mean, they are the richest owners in the NFL. I'm not sure if they're willing to just move on from Russell Wilson after one season. My guess is they want to make a hire for a new head coach that they think can salvage Russell Wilson in Denver and give that a shot before pulling the plug after one season. Now, if they were to move on from Russell Wilson after 2023, the dead cap hit, it's in the neighborhood of 89 million. That's about twice the NFL record. So that would still be 
a huge buyout for them, essentially. Uh, I, I don't see it happening. I think you are glued to Russ for two more seasons. And after the sec after two more years, still a big buyout, but it's much more manageable. But they are the richest owners, so don't rule anything out completely. More questions coming your way in just a moment, but it's cold out there. And if you are brave enough to go to the Broncos Chargers Week 18 game at home, do it in style. Be some of the fans who are still showing up and not a part of the tardies and not a part of the absentees by wearing this awesome Broncos beanie. Now, it's on sale, but just for a limited time, kind of a post-Christmas sale, if you will, when you go to chatsports.com slash D-E-N beanie. Now, I've got that link for you all in the comments and the description of today's show. Sharks9200. Do you think that we put John Elway or Peyton Manning at head coach and we see if someone like Kevin Stefanski or a different head coach that might get fired in the offseason? So I think you're maybe talking about Elway and Manning as an interim head coach because I don't think Elway is definitely not going to be a head coach next season. Peyton Manning, I don't think he has interest in being a head coach right now. He's got a great legacy with the Broncos. You know, it's a quick and easy way to ruin that and kind of stay in it, sort of like Elway. Become the head coach and potentially lose games, and people aren't going to remember you as much as the savior or the guy who won a Super Bowl, but as the guy who was sort of like Elway in the last couple of years sort of somewhat leave a bad taste in your mouth despite some great success. Now, Kevin Stefanski or, say, Mike Vrabel, right? Those are two guys that I think would be surprising fires, no, no, no doubt about it. If Mike Vrabel is fired, he's your number one candidate. No doubt about it. Kevin Stefanski is fired. He's definitely going to be a top candidate. He's got head coaching experience. I don't know if Stefanski is the route you want to go, though. I would probably say Vrabel for sure. Stefanski, you got to do a lot of interviews. Last question coming in from Mean3V. Broncos O-line is the pick with our first round. Yes. There are some great tackles out there. Peter Skaronsky is the left tackle for Northwestern. I love him. Paris Johnson Jr. out of Ohio State. The... The, the hiccup is when the Broncos are on the clock, which is whenever the 49ers are on the clock, it's probably going to be between, I don't know, 24 to 32. Those two guys are unlikely to be around. Now, the NFL draft is always full of surprises, right? No one saw uh, what's-his-face being the uh, Trayvon Walker being the number one pick last year at this time a year ago. So anything is possible. You could see some slips and people start to fall. That happens. Skaronsky, Paris Johnson, uh, Terrence, Terrence Osiris, an offensive guard from Florida. Those are some of the three best offensive linemen. It will be interesting to see if all the top guys are gone. Do they go rogue and go like Hendon Hooker or Anthony Richardson and have those guys sit for a year behind Russ? That is a possibility, kind of like Jordan Love with the Packers. Appreciate everyone for tuning in to this mailbag edition following the Nathaniel Hackett firing during our live show on Monday. If you did not get your question answered, get in the comment section, let me know, and I'll pop down there and answer all the remaining questions you guys have.